tutorial, we will see three different ways of working with our plugins in Flame and Flame Assist. You can work timeline centric, batch centric, or for those of you using Flame Assist, you can use BFX. We will do a brief overview of each scenario so you can choose which way works best for you. Applying an OFX plugin as a timeline effect goes like this. We select a segment or a clip in the timeline that you want to apply the effect to and call up the effects ribbon by selecting effects or control tab to display the effects menu. In the list, you choose open effects. In the toolbar, select load plugin to see the pull down menu. Here you can see all of the OFX plugins that are available. On the timeline, you will have our plugins that only require one input. The other plugins that require more than one input need to be used in either batch or BFX and not on the timeline. Also, if you need to cascade effects, you will want to also use batch or BFX. So for this timeline example, we will use denoise. We can apply denoise and just use the default settings for now. You can watch any of the denoise tutorials for more information on how to use this plugin. You can also check the documentation, which is always provided upon installation. Once you're done adjusting the plugin, you can exit the editor to review or render the timeline effect on the segment. That's how the timeline functionality works, but you have equal flexibility in the batch node compositing. We can switch to batch and see the batch node bin. Here, you also see the open effects node and drag it to the batch schematic. If you double click on the open effects node, you will see the load plugin controls. You can load the dflicker auto levels plugin to prep our shot for use with the dflicker time lapse plugin. The first thing I do when I have new time lapse footage is run it through dflicker auto levels. So we will add this to our time lapse clip. We can analyze the footage by selecting start analysis. You might want to use this plugin not only to stabilize color levels over time, but to help you locate good frames for deflicker time lapse, or just to visualize what is happening. Analysis stores eight values at each frame that can be referenced for recovering significant global color changes. Notice that upon starting the analysis, keyframing for the parameters becomes enabled, and a new value is keyed at every frame. To really see what's going on, switch timeline to graph mode by swiping right to bring up the graph. You can use the frame all option to see the complete view of the graph. In this view, we can see if there's any spikes in the graph. In this case, you can see that we have some small fluctuations. Usually, we want to reference by setting smooth reference channel. It defaults to dev G it also defaults to five frames on each side of the current frame. For the adjust mode, I can use analysis to set levels, which will smooth all curves and apply the variation to all color channels. The adjust frame logic set to normal has no effect, but the only lighter than and only darker than options allow you to correct only lighter or darker frames than what is determined as average. This option makes most sense if you have a wide adjust time range window. You can watch the deflicker intro to auto levels tutorial to get the full description on all the tools and how to use them. Keep in mind, it's generally safe to apply auto levels with default settings as a first pass before deflicker time lapse. Next, we can add another OFX node and double click and load plugin again. And this time, deflicker time lapse can be added to our batch setup. We can attach the output of the auto levels node to the input of the time lapse node and adjust the controls accordingly and render. In this last example, we will see how to use BFX. This is especially useful if you are using Flame Assist and don't have access to the batch menu, and perhaps you need to make changes to an existing project. You can load the project that was set up in Flame, or you can select FX and OFX in the FX ribbon. You can check the box for a selection as flow graph and select Create Batch Effects. 
you will see a schematic that looks just like the batch menu. You can double click on the Open Effects node, select Load Plugin, Revision Effects, and choose Rematch Color Basic for this example. You will see your original clip attached to the red input, and you will notice that the node dynamically updated to have multiple inputs. We can drag our reference clip over from the reel and attach the yellow output to the green input on the Rematch Color Basic node. This is the back or reference in this case. If you double click on the Rematch Color node, the controls will come up. You can make adjustments and select OFX Result or F4 to see your result and render from there. So this was a basic overview on how to use our plugins in Flame and Flame Assist on the Mac.